the evolution of solid state storage. Will there ever be a leap as big as from mechanical spinning rust to the venerable solid state drive? I'm here today to talk about the liquid HHHL, L-I-Q-I-D. It's the Element LQD-3000. So the LQD-3000 is an interesting SSD. And to understand how far we've come, we should take a look at the past, starting with the Fusion IO. This is the IO Drive 2. This is technically a second generation product. This is not the beginning. But Fusion IO was a pioneer and a leader a uh, flash of genius in the uh, the SSD industry. These guys took risks uh, that, that basically nobody else was willing to do in the industry at the time because, I mean, have you ever wondered why servers were so long to adopt solid state storage? Meanwhile, you know, consumers are on second, third generation solid state storage. Well, it's because NAND flash. It was like, wow, I can't believe we can actually store data in this and have it be able to regurgitate the data without errors later. That's really surprising. The enterprise market is so conservative that there was a concern that maybe NAND wouldn't live and there's all these algorithms for like wire leveling and blah, blah, blah. Well, consumers kind of pioneered that. But Fusion IO, well, Fusion, by the Fusion IO Drive 2, which is what this is, that had been perfected. Now this is a 1.2 terabyte, half height, half length, uh, SSD. It's got a PCI Express by 8 interface. This thing is screaming fast, even today. This thing was also insanely expensive when it was new, which is like five to seven years ago. So if you want basically the forerunner of the Intel 750 that was on the market two years before the Intel 750, this is that drive. This uh, basically matches the performance, not just in terms of raw throughput, but also IOPS and latency and some other metrics. It comes pretty close to the Intel 750. Now the Intel 750, sure, Intel has put a lot of engineering into the uh, firmware, or not just Intel, a lot of other companies are involved as well. Because uh, ultimately, you know, this became a SanDisk product and there were some acquisitions and, you know, the, the incumbent companies saw the, the writing on the wall. This actually has Intel NAND flash in it, the Fusion IO drive. But yeah, it just, like, they didn't really have to market it because once you've got Facebook and Google and a couple other companies as customers, you don't care anymore. Like, uh, do we need to sell our product? Nah, we can basically sell as many as we possibly can to Google. So what does all this long-winded insanity have to do with Liquid? Well, let's take a look. This is the MSI M.2 Expander Arrow. This is what comes with a Threadripper, you know, technically Threadripper is a consumer board. This is what comes with a Threadripper motherboard from MSI, the uh, MSI X399, the Creation Extreme. So this thing, I mean, it's, it's got a fan, extra beefy heatsink, PCI Express by 16, and that PCI Express by 16 is broken out into four M.2 slots. And this is pretty similar. We've seen similar stuff from, from ASRock, from, uh, you know, Gigabyte, from Asus. You know, Asus has got the DIM.2, which is a little bit different approach to something like this, but basically all the same technology. Well, not really, but I mean, sort of kind of is. Cramming a whole bunch of M.2s into a PCI Express by 16 interface. Liquid is a little different. And the first big difference is write coherency. So one of the things that you ran into with spinning rust raid is that when you've got three or four hard drives and they're all given a write job and then they lose power, did they all complete the write job to the same spot? And the answer is no. And that's what RAID controllers with battery-backed memory are for. But if you've got a large enough pool of disks, that becomes a real problem. Technologies like ZFS or ZFS on Solaris and now FreeBSD and, and Linux by extension um, permit uh, coherency to basically work even though you don't necessarily have battery-backed memory uh, for that write coherency. Write coherency meaning that you're pretty sure that all of the drives have completed to a point or you can checkpoint it so that you can roll back when everything actually does get power or you've got some kind of a mechanism in there. The liquid, HHHL, big old bank of capacitors. So it's almost like a built-in battery so that these, S these, these NVMe SSDs that are on this card can actually finish their write. And so that's the first piece of super awesome, amazing engineering. Second piece of really awesome, amazing engineering 
is the PLX bridge. So this is a PCI Express by 8 interface that actually has PCI Express by 16 worth of lanes. Now the shipping configs on the website, we've got Toshiba uh, NAND flash and Samsung NAND flash. And so it is insanely fast, like in terms of like the number of IOPS and stuff like that, basically just quadruple the numbers that you get from Samsung. But Liquid is a little more conservative than that with the numbers that they advertise on their website. So they, they bundle it, they put it together in a product with Toshiba and Samsung supplying the NAND flash with these products. And so it has the uh, characteristics of NAND flash, except you've got four NVMe. So to the system, it will show up as four independent NVMe drives. You can raid that together, you could run ZFS on it, uh, you could do whatever. So on like a Threadripper or an Epic platform, you're talking about software raid. If you're talking about an Intel platform, you've got VROC, the little VROC module. Yes, works with VROC, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, if you're talking about Linux, you can use MD RAID on Linux, you could use a different you know, approach with that. But you're basically talking about uh, four NVMe through a PCI Express by eight interface. And generally, I mean, the very highest end, the Samsung SSDs will be like three to three and a half gigabytes per second. In a worst case scenario, maybe you are bottlenecking on, in terms of like the IO throughput. But the other metric that a lot of servers and hosting providers are interested in is IO operations per second. So obviously, when the Fusion IO drive was king, serial attached SCSI SAS SSDs were available, even up to SAS, you know, SAS 6, 600 megabytes per second, SAS 12, 1.2 gigabytes per second. But this thing, this thing destroyed them in IOPS, and it was because you cut out all of the overhead. Even though this is essentially functionally an NVMe SSD, it's not really, it's really just PCI Express attached flash. In order to get it to show up like an NVMe for the operating system, not really an NVMe, just PCI Express flash, I mean, being a little pedantic there, but uh, you need a driver. So under VMware, it takes a special driver, under Windows, it takes a special driver, under Linux, it takes a special kernel module, whereas with the Intel 750, it's basically built in, plug and play, just works. So, but that was because NVMe wasn't, you know, next generation form factor, none of that was really a thing. So with the Liquid interface, it is basically in industry standard. Where Intel would like for the industry to go is something like VROC. And so Intel is adding stuff to their server, their Xeon CPUs, that's also available in the high-end desktop platform to uh, provide acceleration silicon for that RAID. And the industry kind of wants that because of technologies like ZFS. ZFS is really great for redundancy and resiliency and the aforementioned write coherency. And when you're talking about ZFS plus really high IOPS, you know, maybe uh, ZFS has not quite caught up to the really awesomeness of new technology and like leveraging that to be super fast. And they're working on it, the memory compression and stuff like that is going to speed these kind of workloads because the CPU overhead of it is not really much of an issue anymore. It's really just down to optimization. But Google and Facebook and you know, they're, those companies don't even have to think in those terms. They're already working in their own special sauce. So they kind of want to handle it in software. And if you can give them a device that gives them an array of SSDs, then okay, yeah, they'll be all about that. Now also, I'll mention, Liquid has a U.2 version. Yeah, that's right, you can get a two and a half inch carrier that will slide into the two and a half inch uh, NVMe slots, like on the Gigabyte server that we recently demoed. And you can run up to four of these M.2 drives on it as well. Now we haven't talked about Optane. So switching gears a little bit, getting rid of NAND flash, switching to Optane. Optane is gonna be an insanely awesome that is going to be the IO Drive 2 equivalent for Liquid. Because you run Optane, you don't get quite the performance that you do from NAND Flash from Toshiba and Samsung. But in terms of lowering the latency and more IOPS as a result of that lowered latency, Optane is where it's going to be. And the fact that you're running at a PCI Express by 4 or a PCI Express by 8 connection for the aforementioned U.2 or the PCI Express interface is much less of an issue for Optane. So for enterprises that want their VMs to run as insanely fast as possible, well, you've got that option. So in short, if you're on the AMD platform and you want to run this on a Threadripper system with RAID, you totally can. Although the trade-off is that I would say QDepth 1 not really significantly improved for workstation and standalone machines. So like the snappiness of the machine, 
not really going to be there. Unless you're doing like video editing and stuff like that, and then you're really going to drool over the increased performance. It's going to be a little bit more stable because the carrier card is a lot more sophisticated than your, you know, quote unquote standard issue PCI Express by 4 times 4 to PCI Express by 16 interface cards like you get with Threadripper and some of the other systems. Uh, Liquid has put a lot of engineering into their carrier card, their product. So it's the whole enchilada. And so that is going to be more important to you if you're working in the enterprise than sort of the, the DIY solution. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, the software aspect of it. You got things like the VROC and, you know, that on the Intel platform. That's going to work well on both server and workstation platforms. I've got the benchmarks. We did the, use the Pharonix suite to actually do benchmarks. And one of the really exciting things is that the file system can actually become a benchmark. So did testing with EXT4 and XFS. Now, yes, yeah, I, I hear you BSD folks talking about Hammer 2. Hammer 2 is going to have to wait for another day. No Hammer 2. It's not Hammer 2 time. Yeah, FreeBSD has this new file system, Hammer 2, which is really designed for devices like this. I mean, at the end of the day, EXT4 is still designed for spinning rust, but that said, Liquid's got a solid product. Now, the trade-off from using NAND flash that I ran into is that these are triple level cells, and so when you hit those those write buffer limits, or you know, it's like you, you've got four gigabytes of cache, or eight gigabytes of cache, or however the underlying M.2 SSDs are configured, when you hit those walls, the performance will drop. You don't have that with Optane, but sometimes those kinds of things, uh, enterprise product managers worry a little bit. Now you've got four drives, you're four times less likely to hit that in normal, ordinary workloads. So if you were writing, you know, I don't know, a terabyte of stuff at once, when you get a certain percentage through that workload, your performance is gonna drop. And that's nothing to do with the liquid carrier, that's the underlying NAND technology. If you're worried about that, you're gonna want Optane. That's the long and short of it. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, check out those diagnostics, and I'll see you in the forum if you have any questions, or if I've missed anything, or got anything horribly wrong. Here is looking forward to testing the Liquid Optane product, that I'm sure is just around the corner, even though it's not on the website.